Okay, so just so you know the, the value of the knowledge I'm offering you in this video, and to prove that I'm not just some newbie preaching hastily gathered untried chat, I'd like to show you some solar history before introducing you to our hard won secrets. Thank you. It was 40 years ago that solar power entered our boating life, and what a difference it has made. It was a 60 watt panel that we mounted on a post and rotated to harvest this new magic power from the sun on our Adams 13 meter. It greatly cut down the use of our 13 horsepower diesel. We took this fledgling technology to the limit on our cruise of the Pacific on our 29 foot open deck catamaran Essachia. Living off a single deck mounted 60 watt panel and an old 100 amp battery, this system was a model of simplicity. With only an icebox for a fridge, the original sat nav, a tiller pilot, VHF, stereo and some lights. We got by, yet during an overcast period we couldn't power the sat nav and only managed to find Efete Island and make Port Vila by using our sense of smell as the scent of flower blossoms and the fresh earth showed us it lay upwind, hidden by a thundercloud in the night. We then set off around the world on our Adams 13 long nose, very proud of our 120 watt system made up of three 40 watt panels attached to our dodger and companionway hatch cover. A eutectic refrigeration system ran off our 13 horsepower Volvo and also a diving compressor, so we were very energy efficient. A Fleming self-steering vane system saw to most of our steering power, so we mainly had those power-hungry incandescent lights to power, a GPS, an HF radio, no computer, no TV, just books and charts and life. If our batteries went flat, we could still gain enough charge by mid-morning to start our motor. It took us around the world beautifully with barely an issue apart from some poor electrical connections, all easy to repair. Such a simple system that delivered us to the most beautiful parts of this wonderful earth. At this point we had already come so far from the days of oil lamps, ice block fridges and simple alternators which were the norm in my early days of sailing. We dared to dream even bigger and in 2009 launched our 15 meter catamaran Fantasia, packing a solar system made up of six 100 watt panels, five times bigger than our trusty 120 watt system. Yet now we had so much higher electrical demands. The simplicity of a front opening fridge, a mechanical autopilot, laptop computers, bigger viewing screens, broadband radar and mobile phones all meant we still struggled for power at times. In our early days, our main power demands were just cabin lighting and navigation and anchor lights, with the power-hungry incandescent globes chewing through our minimal power supply. Fortunately, the LED light revolutionized this, and for an amazing one-tenth of the power, our lights were brighter, crisper and cooler, and virtually overnight, life aboard was made so much easier. The next leap ahead for us came in 2013 when we replaced our ailing 400 amp lead acid batteries with 300 amp LIFEPO 4 cells. Not only did we drop our battery weight from 120 kilograms to 40 kilograms, the superior power assimilation and the ability to discharge 95% at full power meant we effectively had doubled our available onboard power. Life was made easier again and we enjoyed abundant power with amazing reliability for nine great years. Made confident by all these years of faultless performance, I decided to make the push to full solar electric, which had been my dream since my earliest days as a young boy growing up on the Caribbean island of Grenada back in the early 70s. My West Indian friend, a few years older than me, was an electrical whiz and helped us build a raft on which we mounted an electric fan, pretending it was our motor. It was pure fantasy really, 
but the concept was born there and finally I had the opportunity to make it a reality half a century on. I started by updating the Fantasia solar system. Our 13 year old 100 watt panels were showing signs of degrading but still did the job. But now with much bigger panels, so much cheaper, it was time to act. The original 100 watt panels had cost me close on $600 each. So now for a cost of $250 each, I installed two 365 watt REC panels in our composite Binami. Now we had 750 watts of power in a much cheaper, simpler arrangement. The power to weight ratio of these new panels was vastly improved and this generation of panels had greatly improved efficiencies. Charging on in pursuit of the full solar electric boat, the Bimini was attacked again with the jigsaw and the sides cut off to widen the back and allow it to fit two 390 watt Hyundai panels which were a bit less long than many other 400 watt panels. This took a considerable amount of work, grinding back to expose raw fiberglass, then glassing in new sections, filling and fairing them, then undercoating and final painting. Finally it was finished, what I termed the solar wing bimini. You will notice how the panels are fitted wide of the boom shadows and in a fashion to allow easy access all around them. Surprisingly I have noticed that shadows from stays affect the panel output very little but of course the boom shadow cuts it down dramatically. The key thing with this install is that the panels actually form part of the binami structure saving on construction weight and leaving them open underneath where they are easily cooled by the wind that flows past them. Solar panels perform at their best when cool and their efficiency drops off considerably when they are hot. This is the issue with glued on flexible panels or glass panels without airflow. Yet we still wanted more solar power to build our 48 volt system. And it is here installing a further two more Hyundai 390 watt panels that we moved into a new territory in solar panel installation. It was here I took the radical approach of using a hacksaw to cut slits all along two sides of the panel frame brutally sawing through the immaculate black iodized finish. These kerfs allow the whole panel to curve and take the cambered shape of the deck. Then I fitted a thin metal grinding blade to my hand grinder and using water cooling cut off both ends of the panel to allow air to flow onto the panel cooling the silicon solar cells. You can see where I've sawn away the, the edges, the ends, so the wind will blow through there. Both ends, it's going to be mounted fore and aft. Next I prepared the deck area where it was to be mounted, sanding it smooth underneath, then filling the low spots with epoxy filler, fairing it and giving it a smooth top coat. In this way, water will easily flow underneath keeping it clean and not jeopardizing our rain catching surface by becoming a debris catcher. Now it is time to line it up and apply Fixtech polyurethane adhesive to the alloy runners. Then weigh the whole panel down with various heavy objects, encouraging the panel into its new life as a curved glass panel with a neat method of air cooling, blending it beautifully into the cabin deck. I've cut the, the slits in it at regular intervals along the direction it's going to bend and then I've actually got the aluminium and 
bent it like that and you can hear a little you can hear the al aluminium sort of creaking when it when it gets that pre-bend into it okay so we're ready to glue on this second panel the curved panel curved glass panel onto the deck so see my curving that I've done of the aluminium to let it bend and also in the middle of the deck here in the middle isn't a piece of wood to make sure the center of the glass panel bends evenly with the whole lot here's where it goes into the through the deck so I've used a piece of PVC not PVC a bit of piping that I've that will then slot into there to ensure that it seals properly. So we're just about to glue it down. All right, well there it is, all weighted down. Seems to have come pretty good. So I'm getting some extra weights to push it down. Don't underestimate the power of these 400 watt panels, considering that we lived off a 60 watt panel so successfully in the past. Another way we've made gains in our system is through the use of heavy gauge wires. And this combined with the higher voltage that comes off these bigger panels means that the losses as the power goes back to your battery can be very minimal. Of course, this does necessitate wrestling heavy wires through small holes in difficult places, but that's worth it in the long run for the, for the gains and this all these small gains add up to a, a much more powerful system. Now we were packing 2,300 watts of solar power, which is the equivalent of having one's engine alternator running all day long. Half of it is used to produce 12 volts and the other half 48 volts. A modest but very efficient solar system that is producing enough for all our needs, including charging the electric engine battery. So finally we come to the solar controllers, which became up to 25% more efficient with the advent of the MPPT controllers. So with these bigger panels putting out 40 volts, it's best to mount your controllers close to your batteries where the controllers step down the voltage to around 14 volts. Being a maximum power point tracking device, it is best to have one for each panel so the maximum power point for each panel is not confused. This may only be a small added efficiency but when the real estate on your boat is so valuable, it all counts. Now for charging the 48 volt system. I learned a few lessons which I'd like to share with you. To begin with, I wired two panels in series and used a Victron controller and was very impressed initially, but was to encounter issues, as you will see. A 750 watt combination of panels getting like, look at that, 560 watts on a on what looks to be a very overcast day so it's impressive how much solar is pulled out of the uh the, this kind of light well, there we go it popped up to 600 now yeah it's okay so here you can see the classic problem with the, the two panels wired in series to make 48 volts they're currently producing only seven watts six watts but you'll see outside here today, it is a beautiful sunny day and the panels are the back one there and this one here are only just shadowy, just got shadows on them, but they're cut right down to almost nothing. Whereas this panel here, there you can see the starboard panel there, which is in between those two panels is putting out 93 watts. So now I have the panels wired individually to these 600 watt solar boost controllers 
which take the input of around 40 volts and boost it up to a voltage suitable to charge a 48 volt bank. They seem very efficient and now we no longer have that very poor performance that occasionally occurred with the series wiring. They certainly make charging a 48 volt battery aboard a boat very easy. So here you can see how I've kept it very simple with monitoring my system. I've got one of these which of course tells you uh, how much power is going in or out in, in either watts or amps and the voltage and of course the battery state and the BMS here app that the daily app showing the same kind of information there so there's two ways that it's been shown and of course I've kept the old analog meters and this is how I change from the 48 volt to the 12 volt by using the DC converter so it's it's the most simple system right so let's recap the, the main points here firstly do your research on getting the most efficient panels that will fit your situation obviously I'm a fan of glass panels and the Hyundai panels with the silicon cells cut into five and shingled together then joined with electri electrically conductive adhesive have a lot of great features they fitted my space best and were available at a very cheap price so they were perfect for me and next pay special attention to cooling your panels Vietnamese and target bar locations are perfect but do your best to ensure an airflow underneath and next of course use a heavy gauge wire to hook them up gauge 10 will be pretty much the go for all boat installs and will offer a very low power loss with regards to fitting an MPPT controller for each panel I was skeptical to begin with but now I can see the advantage certainly with a 48 volt system a boost controller for each panel is, is the way to go in practice we get between 2 and 6 kilowatts a day so that's 3 kilowatts for each from each system 12 volt and 48 volt that's between 15 and 45 minutes of decent motoring a day so which is much more than what we usually use so then it's great to be able to use the excess 48 volts uh, by sharing it to the 12 volt system with the DC to DC converter so finally of course it comes down to how you use your power and vary your usage with regards to upcoming demands and, and the amount of sunshine that's going to be available we have to remain sharp about this and keep our minds active and enjoy working with the sun okay so get yourselves a copy of Windward to Fantasia to taste the real romance of cruising. Coming up next will be videos on the vital electric motor cooling system and much more on the details of the solar electric boat. So I'll leave you with some snippets of the joys of cruising. So sort of dreamy sailing here. Solar power putting in about 700 watts even in this sort of shaded atmosphere the sails it's just beautiful to be sailing along relaxing reading a good book letting the miles drift by the morning is coming rainbow arching over the top of us, says my first Carolyn. Oh wow, it's always nice to get the first rays of the sun, the first bit of power into the great system after the night. It's